Hey everybody, Andre from CFX Films here, and welcome to part three of my responsive menu tutorial in Unity 5. This is the part that you guys have been waiting for, and I'm excited to finally be actually teaching this part. So I've decided that I'm going to split this into two more videos, and that's because there's a lot of code and a lot of functions that have to be written for the settings menu and uh, the main menu, the very first screen. So the code that we're going to be writing today is all the button functionality. So all the return buttons, uh, key bindings, video controls, game, and uh, the main menu when you click the play button, exit, and settings, which is going to move the camera to the second position. So there's a lot of pop-ups that happen on the first screen, and that is what we're going to be programming in JavaScript. So let's get started. I opened up the uh, script that I actually used, which was main menu, and I just erased all the code so I could actually rewrite it for you guys and uh, actually show you how it's actually supposed to be written and organized. We're going to write all the functionality of the code first before we actually add it on to the objects in the editor. And because I've written this already prior to this video, I already know that it's going to work. So you just have to trust me as I go through it, and then we'll go through and actually add it to the objects so you can see how it all plays together. And again, I am uploading the the, the project that I have here, my demo project, uh, so you can download it. It's in the description below. So if there's anything that I happen to miss by accident, you have sort of your fail safe there. So that should be a good uh, backup for you and for me, just in case, you know, because this, this can get pretty complicated. So you never know. It's always great to have a backup. So I'm actually useful. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here is very important. Import Unity Engine dot UI. So that is how you access Unity's library, built-in library of UI commands. And that is that has just been implemented since Unity 4.6. So it's, it's relatively new, but it's super important. Otherwise, Unity has no idea how to interpret your UI commands. First thing we need is a camera object, and this is gonna be an animator. And I'm choosing animator because that is how it's looking for you to assign an object that actually has an animator controller attached to it. And in this case, we have one attached to the camera. So it's only going to move from position one to position two, back to position one, but we still need it. See the different panels. We need game object. We need one for game. And now in the options menu, also key bindings. Uh, we need one for movement. Combat. And general. Next, this is subjectively the best solution. Uh, I know this is definitely not, but this is the solution that I went with. So because we have an option to control the game's volume, you can actually cheat it a bit by having a separate script, which we, which I will show you how to write, uh, that will constantly check to see if your player prefs value from zero to one is equivalent to your actual audio's value or volume level. By having this as a game object, it lets us actually control that. So those are the different sound effects in the scene. And are you sure? So when you press new game, these are going to show up. I mean, uh, play campaign, when you press play campaign. Okay, so those are our three. And now the highlight effects. This is when you select an option uh, and it has that highlight effect, that yellow bar that comes across so it lets you know that that's the window that's open. These are the game objects that we're actually gonna assign so we can enable and disable them.
I'm making a bunch of these. Bear with me. One for each button. Movement. Uh, combat. And the general one. I think I spelled everything right. Okay, now the very first function. This is going to be play campaign. So when you press the play campaign button, you want the sub menu to spawn and you want any other menus to close. So first thing we're gonna do is the are you sure menu is going to disappear. And now continue is going to appear. And I'm actually going to copy and paste this so I can save some time here. And we're going to change this to new game button. And this is load game button. All right, and that's all we need for play campaign. Next, disable play campaign. Continue. Uh, forgetting how to spell for a second there. So this is this is the function that we can call if, for example, we press um, the settings menu or the are you sure button, or I mean <laughs> the exit button. So you don't want to have windows layering over each other. So you only want to have one active at the same time. And this allows us to actually enable and disable them dynamically. Now this is position two. So this is going to be where the camera knows to move. So we're going to call Disable play campaign, so it actually closes the menu. And then we are going to set the camera object that we wrote the variable for above. We're going to call its float variable of animate to one. And the animator knows that if it's set to one, move to position two. And actually, I think that's all we need. Now we're going to do position one, which is the opposite, honestly. Set animate to zero. Save that. I have a, hob a, a, a hobbit. No, I have a habit of constantly saving. So good habit to get into. Saves you from losing a lot of work because Unity likes to crash on you at the most inconvenient times. Uh, let's do game panel. Yeah. Uh, let's see. it's got to be capital game panel. All right. Now this is in the settings menu. So when you press game panel, let me show you, uh, let me move this out of the way over here. So when you press game panel, you want the game panel to show up. You want the controls and video and key bindings to all disappear. So let's bring this back full screen again. Let me actually zoom in here so it's easier to see it. Game panel, panel controls dot game object dot active equals false. I'm just going to copy and paste this panel video, uh, panel game, panel key bindings. Now we want the highlight effects to enable correctly. So on game panel, we want the game highlight effect to light up. Uh, so we're going to set that to true, copy and paste it. So we're ready to copy and paste it for the other ones. There you go. And this is going to be line controls. By the way, home and end takes you to the beginning and the end of each line. So it's a nice little trick. Oop, double, double dot there. Bindings. Uh, let's go and delete this. Okay. Now we don't want all of them to be true. Honestly, I don't even know why I copy and pasted the true part. Uh, you want just the game one to show up. We're going to copy and paste this whole thing. Oh, wait. Forgot. 
game panel has to be set to true. Copy and paste it. And now we're going to set, uh, this is going to be video panel. So we want the video panel to set to true. And we want that. Copy and paste it again. Now this is going to be controls panel. So find controls right here. Set the rest to false. Very tedious process, but really satisfying in the end. And now uh, one for key bindings, right? Okay, now if you select the movement panel in the controls, we let's let's rename this movement panel. So if you res, if you click the movement panel, movement uh, okay dot active equals true. We want that to be true. So I'm going to copy and paste this again. Panel combat. False. And I have a mechanical keyboard, so that's why it's so clicky. I hope that's not too annoying. Line combat. Remember, lines just the highlight effects. Uh, there you go. And we're gonna have to copy and paste this whole thing again. We're gonna do that two times. This is combat, and this is general. And going back here, you can see how in key bindings. Uh, where is it? Panel. You have general, movement, and combat. So you have the three different pages for the key, bind key bindings. And uh, let's enable and disable the right ones. So I want that to be true, that to be false, uh, that to be true, that to be false. I want that to be true, that to be false. Be true that to be false. Okay, cool. Now the hover sounds. Play hover. Hover sound dot get component audio source. Oop, what am I doing? Uh this keyboard. Play. And I'm gonna copy and paste this for the uh the hover sound effect. And this is going to be SFX hover sound. And we're going to make one more for play click. And we called it click sound. Uh, yes, capital S. And okay. And are you sure? Am I sure about this? Yes, I'm sure about this. Are you sure? Game object dot active equals true. So now you want to make sure that you call disable play campaign so it, it closes that menu and opens up the are you sure panel. Now once that menu is open, if you press no, are you sure dot game object dot active equals false. But if you click yes, Quit the application or do whatever you want before you quit. I don't know. Play a sound, do whatever you want. All right. So that is actually it, guys, for the main menu script. And that is all. Let's see if I get any errors. And no, I do not. So let's actually go through all the objects and show you where they are all placed on. So I added this script to the camera. So you can see here that these are all the variables and nothing's actually assigned yet. So let's assign them. Camera goes to the main, the, uh, the uh, camera object slot. Panel controls, we look for panel controls. There's panel controls. 
there's panel video, there's panel game, key bindings, and uh, movement, combat, general. It's so satisfying to do this. <laughs> uh, hover sound, where is, well, let's do sound effects, hover sound first. Where is hover sound? Am I just missing something super obvious? Hover sound. Where is this? Oh yeah, it's under camera. Oops. Okay. Hover sound. Click sound. Okay. Are you sure? And the are you sure goes to the are you sure panel, which is under canvas main. There you go. Continue button. Now here are the buttons. New game. Load game. Now, line, here are the highlight effects. So let's do line game, line video, line controls, line key bindings. Uh, where is line movement? Is it here? Yeah, line movement, line combat, and line general. And that is it for the main camera script. As you can see here, I have a script that says check music volume. So let me open this up really quick. So what you can see is happening here is when you start, it says this dot get component audio source. So it's getting the audio listener. I mean, the, uh, uh, the audio source that is on the main camera. And in this case, I have my dead lab music and then it's checking to see what the player pre player prefs value is for the float from zero to one. So the checks music volume. And then when we call update volume, it then sets the volume to whatever that player prefs value is. So that is how you could actually have the music slider. Let me see if I can uh, show an example of how this actually works. Uh, let me focus on that. Where is it? It is under uh, game. There you go, music slider. So you can see here, canvas. Oh, okay, so that's accessing the options menu, the music slider, which we'll get that into the next video. Uh, but I do want to show you, this is where it says check music slider. So on the event trigger, on drag, and you can add event types by you know going here and adding event trigger. So that's that's how you do it. And then you add event type, add drag, and here it's actually checking. So as you're dragging it, it's updating the volume, which we told it to update to whatever that value is. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense now, it'll make a lot more sense in the next video. And that is the same thing, same thing for the sound effects slider. So if we play this now, should work. It's running it for the first time. Okay, there you go. We click play. There you go. Our menu shows up. You click exit. You click no, it closes. And if you click exit and it's still open, and then you click settings, you can see how the menu closes and then it goes to the settings menu. All right. Well, that works really well. So that's it for this video, guys. We will get into the settings menu in part four. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any suggestions, uh, for future tutorials or even how I compiled this tutorial for you guys. Just let me know what you think in the comment section below and I will do my best to improve and help you guys uh, learn as best as I possibly can. So with that, thank you very much guys and I will see you in the next video.